This message is for Brandon Sanderson. If you are not Brandon Sanderson, skip to here. Hi, Brandon. Just you and me now. I'm Steve. We've met several times. I played Magic with you last month. I'm going to be exhibiting at Dragonsteel Con this year. I just finished Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, and it's gorgeous. You've repeatedly said it's your favorite of all the secret projects, and it's definitely up there for me. They say write what you know, so the story about an overwhelmed creator tasked with drawing the supernatural into the everyday for the survival of others, combined with the drifting, uninspired, good enough artist desperately seeking connection, I wondered if it's your favorite because it's the most truthful. Put simply, Brandon, you're doing great. We appreciate your efforts to invite us into your worlds, worlds and stories that have been life-changing for many people. It's a common joke in the fandom that you're actually a robot, because how else could you crank out book after book after book like you do? So when I saw a similar sentiment expressed by Yumi in this story, I just wanted to make sure you hear it. You're not a machine, so if you need to, take some time off. We won't mind. We'll be here. Frankly, it would give us some time to catch up. Journey before destination. You're doing great. Hey, Internet. I'm Steve, and welcome to Raffo. It's good, you guys. It's really very good. Of the four secret projects, this one is Brandon's favorite, and it deserves it. Yumi and the Nightmare Painter manages to perfectly hit that fantasy romance sweet spot, where it's not too cheesy, but it's not boring at all. The tension created by the fact that the two main characters can't touch but are still tied to each other, the switching between different, very different worlds, and the fact that it all works out in Realmatic Theory is so cool. It didn't quite make my favorite of the secret projects. I really love Tress, but Yumi is still solidly an S-tier Sanderson novel for me. Yes, I'll have a tier list coming soon. I haven't made the type of noises I was making during the last few chapters since the climax of Rhythm of War. <laughs> First and foremost, it's a romance. Brandon's gotten criticized for his romances before. His first published book, Elantris, is fundamentally a romance that doesn't quite hit the mark. To all the Elantris stands I just pissed off, it's still good, I still like it, but it's still very clearly Brandon's first book. The romance in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, though, is pining. It's an interesting application of Sanderson's second law of magic. Limitations are more interesting than powers. The fact that Yumi and Painter are present in each other's worlds, but can't physically interact with them or even with each other, is way more engaging than sticking two people together and making them fall in love. Guiding another through a foreign world, needing to fill unfamiliar roles, it was fascinating to me, and I was fully invested in their developing relationship. It also provided a great way for me as the reader to be introduced to the two very different environments of Yumi and Painter. Teaching the other was also teaching me. However, I am a Cosmere nerd, so finding all the little things that connect the book to the wider universe was really my favorite thing. So let's dig into it. I know it's going to distract some of you unless I explain at least a tad. You know us too well, Brandon. Such spoilers. This thing is tied to Roshar, Cell, Scadriel, Nalthus, Tangentially First of the Sun, and uh, maybe more that I missed. Starting at the beginning, Hoyd is telling this story to someone either on and or from Roshar. Immediately says Painter looks Vaden. Chols are mentioned a couple times, and even a specific call out to the Reshi Isles. Also in chapter one, we get a new shard, Virtuosity. Related to the word virtuoso, not virtue. So it's related to artistic talent. And like many people burdened with immense talent, it turns out that she was self-destructive. We know Hoyd was offered a shard, but turned it down. Was it the shard of artistic talent? With that, there's only one shard who hasn't been explicitly named. She's been hiding. Shard 16, Cosmere Hide and Seek Champion. Virtuosity also isn't the only one mentioned in the book. Cultivation apparently has a hand in giving us nightmares. The normal kind, not the <laughs> gloopy. Given the numerology we've seen on other planets, 16 on Scadriel with Preservation, 9 and 10 on Roshar with Odium and Honor, there's at least three different numbers Virtuosity could be related to. 
Most likely 13, which is significant in the Fibonacci sequence, which is referenced multiple times. There are 13 ritual prayers, currently 13 other Yokihijo, but also at the end of her ritual bathing, she holds her breath for 144 seconds, which is 12 squared. And a week on their world is 11 days. Eh. There's more ties to Roshar as well, more than just the audience. Liren, Sorry, Li Yun, the overbearing parental figure who is constantly disapproving of the main character but is redeemed in the end, is called Warden Nimi. Probably just an artifact of Hoyd's translating, but worth mentioning. The spirits are strikingly similar to Spren, and even can power spheres that are used as light sources. The nightmares are formed from a substance described very similarly to Midnight Essence, shifting molten tar and painting them forces them to conform to the painter's vision of it, which sounds a lot like what happens when measuring flame spren. We've got another world hopper from Roshar. Masaka is a Dissian Aimean, a sleepless like Arklo or Nikli, who is tired of wars. Sleepless are meant to play a major role in this era of the Cosmere, so I wonder what specifically she's hiding from. Also, she's got a face that's all one hordling. Impressive. Then, of course, there's Design, who doesn't have a real body. We all kind of learned our lesson on that. Ooh, I know what that's referencing, and I'm horrified. She's got long white hair like Hoyd, and is curvy like a graft cosine, presumably not like Hoyd. She says storming, denies worship because she's not an honor spren, and has a crazy advanced fabrial that can visualize the spirit web. Also said she makes a mediocre sword, but there are complications. Probably just Hoyd's inability to harm things that aren't Kelsier. Speaking of Kelsier, the tug Yumi and Painter feel when they get too far away is basically exactly what was happening to Kel in Secret History, except his capital C connection was to a planet and not a person. We've got more evidence that Scadriel is the most Earth-like of all currently known Cosmere planets. They've got dandelions and plain old rice. Yumi's cultural view of Hell is surprisingly similar to the Southern Scadrians. Heaven is warm below and Hell is frozen above. Above, the souls of the unworthy drift in the cold skies. When Yumi finally goes into the shroud, it's strangely transparent to her, even without burning tin. Which makes sense. When an Alamancer burns tin in the mists on Scadriel, they're accessing the power of preservation, which is exactly what the mists are made of, aligning or resonating their spirit web with the same stuff making it less obstructive. Yumi at this point is made of the same investiture as the Shroud, so of course it's easy for her to see through. We know that investiture has three phases, gas, liquid, and solid. The Shroud is gaseous, the nightmares themselves are pretty liquidy, so when they get significantly stable, they could conceivably become metallic, right? Which is why when the nightmare is chasing Yumi, it sounds like metal on stone. Virtuosity, yum? The high end lines also react to metal, but it wasn't really expounded on except for heat, so it might not matter. But Iron 7 Way Station? The Scadrians rule space in Era 4. Cell has some ties here. In fact, the first secret Cosmere connection ever is also present in this book. Both in Elantris and in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, people eat with my pawn sticks of the Rose Empire. Another artifact of translation, but a connection nonetheless. Seons are mentioned as a type of self-aware invested entity, along with Fae that respond to creativity. The Shroud also has similarities to the Door, a miasma of pure investiture. And Yumi is invested to the level of an Elantrian, which we now know is more than a return from Nalthus. And boy are there meddlings from Nalthus here. The Father Machine, the reason behind the Shroud and Hyon and Nightmares and everything, is an awakened object, tasked with harvesting energy from spirits. Define spirit. Oops. Because energy, or in this case investiture, cannot be destroyed, thanks physics, the exhaust from this machine is the dissipated investiture of souls, described as fluidy black smoke. At this point, you should be realizing the connections between another awakened object that consumes souls and leaks black smoke because it fundamentally misunderstood its initial command. Nightblood has a cousin now? Though I do want to know how they awakened it, because presumably they didn't actually have breath, 
So they must have hacked Virtuosity's investiture somehow? Or is her system able to awaken, like how we've seen other systems accomplish the same thing? Light weaving, for example. Also, Hoyd mentions he knows what it feels like to have a piece of your soul forcibly consumed. Is that just a reference to what happened at the end of Rhythm of War? The reason why he set up those safeguards that turned him into a statue? Or does Hoyd pick up Nightblood in the presumably significant stretch of time between those two books? Anyway, the nightmares feed off minds, attracted by thoughts, similar to the Deepwalkers or other predators in the Pantheon on First of the Sun. Cokerly would be a popular chicken over here. Just watch out for the giant crow. Giant AVR, that'd be so cool! Of course, the biggest Cosmere connection, the one we don't really even understand yet, is the fact that the other planet in the system is populated by Shodell. This is the second on-screen appearance of a Shodell, the first of which was at the end of Lost Metal. Shodell are from the original Cosmere planet, Hoyd's home planet of Yolan, also where dragons are from. The first holder of the shard Ambition, Uli Da, was a Shodell, and now they're showing up again. Feels big to me. I wonder how and why they went to Utol. And that's Secret Project 3! Yumi and the Nightmare Painter is available on Dragonsteel's website. They've got all the copies at the warehouse already, so you'll get it as soon as Kickstarter fulfillment is done, plus the digital files immediately. I'll have an unboxing video as soon as I get mine. It's pretty. Big thank you to my patrons for their support. The roster is filling out nicely with Doug, Matt, Steve, and Data Gremlin at the top. If you'd like to join this illustrious group, support me on Patreon. Next week we're going to be talking about the recent Lord of the Rings magic release, and I've got a story to tell. It's an excellent set, very nostalgic. So if you're into magic and haven't opened up a pack yet, go play and find out! Are you me? I am Yumi. No, are you me? Yes.